Hi team, uh, welcome back. Uh, I'm just going to continue on in the education video series around the vagus nerve, the all-important vagus nerve, and you now there's quite a lot to it. This is pretty important information. I mean, the, the discoveries that Dr. Stephen Paul just made, uh, however long ago, 15, 10, 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, have really changed the way we view our psychology and our physiology. So I really feel it's important to share this information. I'm passionate about this subject, I'm passionate about this nerve and what it can do. It's not the be-all and end-all, there's no such thing as the be-all and end-all in anything, especially when it comes to the body. But it is a very, very important nerve and structure. So in the first video what we discussed was, uh, you know, the basics around the nerve, what are the organs and glands that it's connected to, um, and then we had a, we discussed the relationship between the dorsal vagus, which is the posterior primitive one, and then the ventral vagus, which is the, the front nerve, um, and the difference between those two. And they're both equally as important, but in terms of regulating our mind so we can process stress, uh, we want the ventral vagus nerve, the one at the front, so they both come through here, down through the neck. We want that one to be uh, highly, more highly engaged than the uh, dorsal, dorsal vagus. Um, so we can actually respond to stress properly. So the exercise I showed you a few days ago was the basic exercise, and that was interlocking the fingers, placing your hand behind the occiput, your head is still, and your eyes are holding a static position on the right. You wait for the response, you know, a sigh, yawn, or a swallow, and then you would do it on the other side. And that, what that's gonna do is it's gonna reposition C1, and when C1's in a good position, the nerve itself is gonna have equal uh, flow either side. So that's always a good thing. And remember where I said that the nerve is 80% um, afferent or eight, it's 80% or more, some people say it's 90% sensory. So what we've just done then is we provide input and then the, the nerve, the, where the nerve lives is saying, yes, thank you. It's telling the brain, okay, I can actually, I feel safer now. It's really all about safety. I feel safer now. Guess what? Instead of operating from here, now you can start to engage this which is it's good, we need that. We need better think through problems. Um, what we're gonna to cover today is essentially a little exercise called the half salamander. And it involves, it's quite similar to what we did. It still involves movement of the eyes to the outside. We're just gonna add in some movement to it, some lateral flexion of the neck. It's gonna to start to simulate a few other nerves that are related to it. So, the cranial nerves, there's 12 of them. Uh, the vagus nerve is cranial nerve 10. And the way the cranial nerves work and a lot of other nerves and structures in the body is anything that's close to it has a, an action on it. So the nerve above and below it on the numerical order, 11 and nine, they uh, have, they, some people would, and even anatomists would call it the same nerve because it, you know, nerves are structures, they are tissues. And so when you um, affect, when you stretch the tissue, it has an effect and has a, it's a bit of feedback into the nerve so we can get some changes. So the nerve, uh, cranial nerve nine is the glossopharyngeal nerve and that's involved in swallowing and various other functions. And uh, then we have cranial nerve 10, of course, and that all those functions that it's involved with. And then we have cranial nerve 11. And while most people aren't aware of cranial nerve 11, that's called the accessory nerve, they're pretty aware of the, the two muscles that it has control of. So it's main, obviously, it connects to everything else, but the accessory nerve's main function is to facilitate the upper trapezius muscle, you know, where everyone gets that trigger point right there. There's a reason why. And this muscle here, the SCM, which is involved in turning heads the opposite side and, and a bit of flexion as well. So the accessory nerve on this side controls both those muscles at the same time. It's quite interesting because um, these muscles uh, have a similar, they're sort of almost opposite in their functions, but they work together. And you can tell when someone's stressed, when they're in their fight or flight response, because all you need to do is just look at their neck. Look at what's happening here, look at what's happening here, and you go in and you press here and it's sore, and you're like, okay, they're in this fight or flight response. That uh, ventral vagus is down regulated and they're really stressed. So they're not ventral, and they're not dorsal vagal, they're not, you know, freezing, they're actually, you know, getting ready to fight or run. Always look up here, you, so you, you can't hide this stuff. So what we're gonna do with this to, to again, start to downregulate um, the stress response and upregulate the ventral vagus 
is quite similar, but it's, it's again, I would, if you've had any uh, head injuries or head traumas, I would stay away from the eye positions or get assessed by a functional neurologist first, just to make sure you're able to do the exercise. But if you start looking to the outside and you're getting any symptoms, dizziness or whatever, just stop it, don't do it, okay? Don't ever move into pain, don't ever move into dysfunction. Doesn't mean it's not a good exercise, it just means it's probably not good for you right now, okay? Uh, so please tune into that. Now, the way this one works is you're essentially going to start head static, and it's going to involve a lateral flexion, which people often struggle with. They often will rotate like that. It's quite hard not to. But you're going to, again, we're going to bring our, we're going to look over this direction. I'm going to hold that position. Then I'm going to move, trying to maintain my eyes still looking horizontal, and hopefully I am uh, relatively straight here. So I'm just going into lateral flexion. I haven't rotated at all. I'm going to maintain that position. I'm just looking at something on my left. Just find a target. And as you can see, I get a ventral vagal response quite quickly. You can hold this for 30 to 60 seconds. Hold the position of the eyes and then return to normal. I'm going to do the other side. So as I'm, as I'm in this position here, I'm stretching the accessory nerve and the cranial nerve 9. Again, I've just upregulated my ventral vagal. I already feel calmer. You probably noticed it in my voice. Um, so that's another way of stimulating the vagus nerve because I know the previous exercise I would have showed you would work for maybe half or more of you, and some people would be like, oh, I didn't do anything. Okay, and there's reasons why. Uh, so this is another option that you can use. Um, it's called the half salamander. So if you have any questions, please let me know. There is another thing I wanted to touch on in terms of vagus nerve. So remember, it is a nerve. So uh, nerves, we, we basically only have one nerve in the body. What that means is that all our nerves come off the spinal cord and the spinal cord is the really thick nerve of the body and it's all one sheath. So the way nerves work is they need to be mobile. They need to be getting sensory feedback and that allows their motor function to be better. So if the vagus nerve comes through here, through the neck, next to all these arteries here, um, which is always why, why you be careful, don't, you don't want to press too hard through here because they've got you know, very important structures here. One way we can actually um, kind of floss or, or tension the vagus nerve is literally, it's another simple exercise, it's called head nods. It's literally going into flexion and extension. Flexion and extension. Now when you go into extension, you'll feel that pull. And most of that pull is not the muscles Okay, it's actually the nerve. You'll feel the nerves at the front there pulling. So as part of my neurodevelopmental you know, movement training that I try and do every day, I do this 20 times a day. And this actually tensions the vagus nerve. So it's gonna improve everything that the nerve is related to. So anything down, so that you, know, I spoke about all the organs last time, so heart, lungs, stomach, gallbladder, liver, spleen, small intestine, large intestine, thyroid, uh, thymus, adrenals, etc. So when you do that 20 times, this is more tapping into the other side of the vagus nerve, but again, it's just, you're giving stimulation into the nerve, so therefore everything that is related to the nerve is gonna fire up more. So uh, that's my little lecture today. So there's a little bit more about the vagus and other different ways that you can you know, um, facilitate it other ways that you can facilitate the ventral vagus nerve so your your brain is calmer and you can respond to stress a lot easier so thank you guys thank you for taking the time again i know these videos are long but just take the time because it is pretty valuable information and um, it can change things for you so thank you